Face Palm America. I'm Beowulf Rockland. FacepalmAmerica.com is where you can get more information about the show, listen to past episodes, etc., etc., etc. I'm very privileged right at the moment to be part of sort of a digital global conspiracy because I am on a Zoom meeting with three, three fantastic people who are in vastly different parts of the world from, from myself. And yet I think we conspire around a very central and interesting set of ideas, and that is that corporations, big corporations especially, spew forth and have for the last you know 100 years or so at least an awful lot of nonsense, an awful lot of lies. And they've written a book about it. Joan Walsh is, you've probably seen her on cable television many times before, and if you subscribe to The Nation, which I happen to, as she is the national affairs correspondent for that publication. Nick Hanauer, you have, if you are in progressive circles, you have probably heard his name. He is an entrepreneur and a venture capitalist and the founder of the public policy incubator Civic Ventures. He also hosts the podcast Pitchfork Economics. And the book they've written is Corporate Bullshit, Exposing the Lies and Half-Truths that Protect Profit, Power, and Wealth in America. Nick, Joan, welcome to Face Palm America. Thank you so much for being here today. We are Thanks for thrilled me. to do it. So I, you have written this book and it has so many different examples of the types of, of nonsense that corporations have spewed forth over the course of the years. And it, it seems like they repeat. You know, history repeats itself, and, and it seems like bullshit repeats itself an <laughs> awful lot. We, we've been told for, for so long in, in this era that uh, it's, it's just not practical to have, you know, any sort of coherent national health insurance, for example, that, that Medicare for all is not a thing that will work. It's just, it's just bad. It's just awful. And yet, you know, in the 1940s, we were hearing that from, from big corporations and the organizations that represent them. In the 1960s, we were hearing that same thing, that like socialized medicine was encroaching on us. And future president at that time, Ronald Reagan, was being enlisted in the effort to, to decry that. How, how, how is it that we keep buying the same lies over and over again? Yeah, well, if I, if I could start off, Beowulf, I think, first of all, thank you, thank you again for having us both on. I think... The best way to understand this is to zoom out a little bit mm-hmm. to human psychology. And, you know, for a, a, a moment of clarity for me came when I was, you know, Joan and I have longtime activists as, as our co-author, Donald Cohen, and we had run into this stuff again and again and again. And I had, uh, I have a friend named Molly Crockett, who's one of the world's leading neuroscientists. She does research on human moral reasoning. And I called Molly and I was talking to her about this and she said, oh, this is very, very simple. The, the, the thing that is most important about human moral reasoning is intention. Intention is everything. This is why if you purposefully murder somebody, you go to jail or worse. But if you're driving down the freeway and somebody jumps off an overpass and hits your car and dies, you're, you're not likely going to get in very much trouble. The person is equally dead in both cases, but in one case you intended to do it, in the other case you obviously did not. And what you find when you examine corporate bullshit is always the same thing, is pro-social language hiding antisocial ends. Like we would take the poison out of the water, but that would be bad for you. Yeah. Right? Like, we would give you a wage increase, but then we'd have to fire you, and that would be bad for you. Uh, You know, some form of that. So what they never say is, are you kidding? This poison is profitable. Yeah. Our profits and our executive bonuses depend on this, and I don't care if you and your kids die. Like, they They, they, never say that. They have to frame it in a way... So yeah. that, hey, there's a benefit for you in this. Exactly. Even if, if that's you complete know, nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, dying of of botulism is, you know, is in the natural course of things. Of course, that <laughs> why, why should we take right. precautions or whatever it is, right? right? No, there's no such thing as climate change. You pick it. You pick it. What, what they never say is the truth, which is 
we don't want to raise your wages because that would de decrease our profits and our executive bonuses. They never yeah. say that. This is the most obvious thing in the world. I, I, anybody who looks at these circumstances instantly can see that that's what's going on, but they never say that. They always say something like, yeah. if you raise wages, it will kill jobs and harm the very people you're intending to help. And what that does is that it, it hides the antisocial intention in pro-social language, which 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 makes us not angry but fearful. If they yeah. said the truth, their houses would get burned down, and they know yeah. it. Yeah. So so that that's that's what this is all about. And so Joan, Don, and I have been up against this for our entire careers, mm. right? And. Our friend Don actually built a database of these lies on a sabbatical, and he, he, he thought they'd be useful, and he gifted it to my team, and then we didn't know what to do with it. And then <laughs> it'll, it's a long story, but the three of us got together and said, my God, people should see this. Yeah, People should see these lies in context, because when you see the history of the lies and the shape they take, the next one is less plausible. Yeah. Today's lie is more clearly a lie, not this like, oh, you know, maybe drinking that whatever it isn't terrible for us or whatever it is. Yeah, so one, that's kind of once that's once true. once you catch on to it, it's 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 a little bit easier to see because yeah, because really it's by repetition and and those messages seeming ubiquitous that it really has its power because because most of this and and Joan, correct me if I'm wrong. Most of these lies seem really like counterintuitive, like, you know, poison is good for you, you know, among uh, among others. I mean, most people aren't going to believe that. But if they hear like these specific rationales and they hear them over and over again from like all these supposedly different sources, it like the repetition starts to have an effect. Well, yeah, they don't. They really have gotten pretty good about not saying poison is good for you anymore. <laughs> Although we have examples of the lead industry saying lead is good for your yeah. health. Mm -hmm. Flat out, it is. You need you need some. Everybody needs some. Say it again. There's, a, there's an RDA for it. A recommended daily allowance of poison. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a vitamin that has lead in it because I felt you know I just needed a little. It's, kick. it's just you know there's iron, there's lead. You know it's different things. <laughs> right. What's the difference? Right. Anyway, they don't say that so much anymore. But, you know, I think as as Nick says, they've learned that they've got they've got to make it seem like they're doing something good for us. Right. Or if they cut back on something, it would be bad for us. And 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 for me, I feel like years ago, I realized that Ronald Reagan said a lot of things. and he, We've got him saying a lot of bad things in our book. But one of the most dangerous things he said was when he said in the 80s, the federal government fought a war on poverty and poverty won. Well, it wasn't true. But the, the other thing that it did was couch his anti poor people agenda, anti safety net agenda as something that that good people want to do because what we've been doing is bad for the poor. So anybody yeah. who cares about the poor has to realize got to stop these federal programs and we've got to encourage marriage and employment and, you know, all these other things. And I think it was really a, an amazing turn because you didn't have to be racist or right. even necessarily anti-spending. You had to care about the poor and think, hmm, this might be the wrong way of helping them. And we see that again and again and again, where they frame something as, you know, good for the people we care about. And, and I think the interesting thing for us, almost as we were working on the book, you know, we knew what we had, but we didn't totally know what we had. It turns out to be a really great handbook for activists or lawmakers or anybody who cares about public policy or the, the state of the world to look at get you know get their arguments in in a short book form with a lot of cartoons i am yeah. not I, we didn't pictures. Dump it. yeah pictures. We got pictures. i love pictures <laughs> yeah we, everybody <laughs> loves pictures i've had two people say to me you know oh god my i just got the i'm sorry i just got it in the mail the book in the mail last night i, I didn't think i'd be able to get through it but i did and it was yeah. fun and yeah. uh, that's an important it thing to, to take away. It really is something you need to read and you will enjoy reading. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a coffee table book for obviously we're in a podcast, so people can't see it. But we tried to make it a coffee table book 
this is not like a long academic grind. Yeah. It's it's meant to be if it wasn't so sad, actually, it would be really funny. I mean, you just cannot right. <laughs> believe the crap that has come yeah. out of people's mouths over the years. Uh, and of course, when you look at it retrospectively, it is so crazy and absurd what people yeah. uh, were defending. It, 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 you know, the defense of the indefensible is another sort of a, another way to look at the book. It's just shocking. Um, yeah. and, and I think and humor it, is so important as a as a part of this and positivity because it's it, it is very difficult when when corporations are throwing sunshine up your ass to like like the responses to say and it's true. Well, no, that's not true. And this is really, really bad. And that puts you kind of in a default negative position. And that's a difficult yeah. position to argue from. It's depressing and it makes you get into like the details of why this thing isn't true, which gets you off into the weeds, which gets which gets boring. And to deal with that in, in a concise way and a humorous way and a positive way is 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 such the right approach there. And I really got to laud both of you guys on that. Yeah. Thanks. No, it, and it's you know, and it's a really Again, it's a very personal project for yeah. us because if you are, if you have put a bunch of your life's energy into bending the arc of history towards justice, yeah. <laughs> you run into all this stuff like every day. It's yeah. just it, you know, there's just an onslaught of it in any domain that you choose. No matter what yeah. you're trying to improve, the people who benefit from the current arrangement will spew this kind of bullshit. Yeah. And it, it, it is, it, you know, again, it, 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 it took a long time to recognize the patterns and the consistency and the fundamental strategy, which is really the point of writing the book and organizing the data in it so that other people who care about making the world a better place or living in a better world you know, can effectively be inoculated against yes. this kind of nonsense, right? Because when you see it all, you're like, oh, they do it. They always do that. Like yes. so when you do it the next time, you're it, like, it is a mental vaccination against bullshit, yeah. which is which is exactly. a, a very. It, it, I, we really do have a bullshit pandemic in which yeah. we are in in, in the yes, midst. Yes, we of. do. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And that's that was really kind of the point of it, which is to try to help other people. Um, navigate some of this in a more constructive and effective way. Right. Now, I, I don't know if we're going to have time for all of these, but there are some some very broad categories of, of bullshit which you guys uh, delve into in the book. And, and the first one is very simple. It's not a problem. It's just outright yeah. denial of yeah, what not a problem. They, they, there's there, there's nothing wrong with this. This, you know, the, with cancer. No, yeah. don't, don't worry about it. Pay no attention to those me melting ice caps. Climate change does not exist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so, so, I mean, that, that heat wave you've just experienced. Yeah, yeah. That that, that was a Chinese hoax. It was. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, you 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 you, you yeah. say that, and and yet I can yeah. think of of so many examples yeah. as ridiculous yeah. as that sound is. People have actually said that, and it's and it's yeah. so interesting to me. Like on all the different levels they fight against, not not just progressively, as you would think from like you know processing grief, or where there's first denial and then like the f the five different stages but they do all simultaneously and i guess that's because yeah, different yeah. people people are processing different ways but one they're saying it doesn't exist it's a hoax and they're saying uh, oh but if it does exist it's actually going to be a benefit and two oh like yeah it's going to ruin everything but there's nothing we can do about it anyway it's just like you or get, it's a problem yes yeah. it's a problem but it's your fault but, you know, yeah, yeah. yes yes Mining accidents or industrial accidents they you know they do happen but it's because the men and they're mostly men on, on the, in these quotes. Absolutely. The men on the job, they wouldn't wear their hat. They didn't wear their steel-toed boots. They were drunk. You know, men yeah. are poisoned by chemicals. It's only the drunkards. If you drink, you might have a problem with the chemicals in, in the and you know at at the workplace. But if you don't, which you shouldn't during the day anyway, you're going to be fine. So they always yeah. find a way to blame it on the people who are suffering. Exactly. They're stupid. The they're, yeah. they're lazy. Victim, they're 